Yeah, so George wants to figure out how to build a doji filter so that no signals can occur on a doji, right? So the bar has to have some kind of a, a body direction to it, right? So there has to be some kind of candlestick body direction to it in order for a signal to occur. So on a doji, and look at there, there we go. We just happen to have a doji on my chart. So if there's a doji, that will prevent uh, a signal from occurring on that bar there, all right? I'll just see if there's any other dojis. No, I, I don't see one close by, but once we get this um, logic built, then I'm sure we'll find all kinds of dojis here. All right, first let me get Bloodhound started. Uh, so let's put in today's file name. So we'll hit the change button. Today's workshop file name. All right, so let's click on the logic tab and we'll start working on the logic board here. And we'll hit new and we'll give this some kind of a name here. All right, so we're gonna remove signals on doji bars. So this should be, yeah, like I said, this one's gonna be pretty simple here. So I'm gonna take a bar direction solver like so. Now the bar direction, right, is giving us obviously a bar direction and we can see on dojis, right, there's, there is no um, no output on a doji bar, right? So that's what we're going to take advantage of is no output on the doji bar. And so, you know, if you combine that with an AND node, and I'll, I'll, yeah, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but, you know, so if you have your, your signal logic and, you know, take your signal logic, you know, into this AND node, you know, along with a doji bar, you know, sometimes that's all you need to do here but since we don't know whether you know George is going to have a short signal on up bars right a short signal might occur on up bars so you know with the bar direction right it has long signals on up bars so if you have a short signal on during an up bar well you won't you need to have a short output as well so this is not quite universal yet, right? So basically the bar direction, you know, is removing short signals on up bars and it's removing both signal directions on doji bars here. So to make this a little more universal, we're going to grab a long short modifier here like that. And the next step to figure out which swap mode can we use and in this case uh, the addition worked just fine for us so now we can see that on every bar there is a long and a short so this will allow a signal in any direction right on bars that have a body but we can see on the doji that since there's no output Right, this will remove any signals that occur on a doji bar. But on any other bar, you can now get a signal in either direction, either a long or a short. Right, so this is a little more uh, universal setup here. And let me finish setting up the name here. So I always like to um, name my long short modifiers you know, to the mode that they're set to. So now we would just connect that, right? Connect that into the AND node here. Um, that creates basically a doji filter here. We could just name this here. Here, something like that, right? So again, the you know the key is the rest of your system logic, you know, is going to be off to the side here, and you connect the rest of your signal logic into this AND node, you know, or vice versa, if the rest of your, most likely, you know, whatever signal logic you're working with already has an AND node, you know, as the last node, right, in, in the, in the, um, in the system, uh, the last, so yeah, so your system probably has an AND node 
just before the result node. So you don't need two AND nodes if that's the case, right? So if your system, you know, ends with an AND node, then you can just take these two nodes and just connect it right up to the very last AND node in your system, you know, right before the result node. So, all right. So that does it for the first question there. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm.